phosphate glucokinase is not in fact that it's not inhibited by that molecule. And that does two important things. So let's see what this actually does. So let's suppose inside our blood we have a very high level of glucose. Now, if we have a very high level of glucose, that glucose is toxic if it remains at that high level. And it's the job of the liver cells to uptake all that glucose to maintain the proper level. And so the fact that inside the liver cells, we not only have that hexokinase, but in addition, we also have that glucokinase, both of these two isozymes will basically work together to take in as many glucose molecules as possible and to transform those glucose molecules, for instance, into glycogen so that all those glucose molecules can be removed from the blood. So we see that when blood glucose levels are high, the glucokinase makes sure that the liver cells transform that glucose into glycogen and fatty acids and other building blocks so that all those glucose molecules are removed from, that, uh, from the blood. Now that's the, that's the first important reason why we have glucokinase in liver cells and we don't have in muscle cells because muscle cells, the function of muscle cells is to simply move our, uh, create voluntary motion, but liver cells have a much more diverse biochemical role. Now the other reason, well, what happens when the blood glucose level is low? So, Let's suppose we're essentially starving. So we haven't eaten for, let's say, a week, and we essentially want to eat. We need to eat to actually survive. Now, let's suppose we see a sandwich on the table, okay? And to get to that sandwich, what has to happen? Well, the skeletal muscle cells actually will, will allow us to move to that table and grab that sandwich. And it's the brain cells in our nervous system that essentially will tell those skeleton muscles to make our way to that table so that we can actually eat that sandwich and survive. So what I'm basically saying is, under certain circumstances, when the blood glucose level is low, the fact that in liver cells we have the glucokinase basically means the glucokinase will be much less likely to bind to that glucose than the hexokinase is found in the brain cells and the muscle cells. And so when the blood glucose level is low, the low affinity of the glucokinase for glucose, remember glucokinase is 50 times less likely to bind to glucose than hexokinase is found in other cells, so muscle cells and brain cells. And so that basically ensures that the hexokinases of the brain and the muscle cells get that glucose first because under these conditions of let's say starvation, the liver function isn't as important as the muscle function and the brain function that will allow us to actually get to that food source and ingest those carbohydrates, those sugar molecules. So these are the two important reasons for why we have the glucokinase in these liver cells. And finally, let's move on to pyruvate kinase. So pyruvate kinase is responsible for catalyzing the final step of glycolysis, and that means the transformation of phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate and ATP. So this is our step. So we begin with gl a glucose that is eventually transformed into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, this molecule here. So many more steps take place. Then we have PEP, so phosphoenol pyruvate, and the pyruvate kinase transforms this molecule into pyruvate and ATP. Now, the same exact allosteric molecules that we spoke about in our discussion on skeleton muscle cells also are applied to these pyruvate kinases found in, in uh, liver cells. So essentially, if we have high concentrations of ATP, the ATP creates a negative feedback loop that binds onto pyruvate kinase and diminishes its activity, inhibits its activity in the same way that ATP inhibits the phosphofructokinase. Now, because pyruvate also forms, let's say, building blocks such as amino acids, if we have, because pyruvate forms alanine, if we have high amounts of alanine, that will also create a negative feedback loop which will go on and essentially diminish the activity, inhibit the activity of pyruvate kinase. But, 
if we have low levels of glucose, um, uh, low levels of ATP inside our cells, then the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will go on to create a positive feedback loop and, uh, loop and stimulate the activity of pyruvate kinase. So this is the same exact mechanism that is used by pyruvate kinases found in skeletal muscle cells. But again, we have a very important difference. In skeletal muscle cells, we actually have an isozyme of pyruvate kinase known as M isozyme, where M, you can think of, stands for muscle. While inside our liver cells, we have the L isozyme for the pyruvate kinase. So essentially, inside the liver cells, we have both L and M isozymes, but it's the L isozyme in the liver cells that predominates. And so unlike the M isozyme we find in muscle cells, the L isozyme is able to, uh, is actually controlled by another process and that process is phosphorylation. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So this is the L isozyme that we typically find in liver cells and it exists in two different states. In a phosphorylated state and in a state that, uh, where it's not phosphorylated. Now, when we phosphorylate that L-pyruvate kinase in liver cells, that deactivates the molecule. It decreases its ability to actually catalyze the reaction. Now, why would we want this extra mode of regulation in our liver cells? Because again, the liver cells under, let's say, starvation conditions don't actually need that glucose as much as, for example, brain cells do. And so what that means is, if we have very low amounts of glucose in the blood, our pyruvate kinases will be disabled via this phosphorylation and that will make sure that the glucose molecules are not uptaken by the liver cells and they, are actually, and they actually reach the brain cells and the muscle cells, the cells that actually need them more than the liver cells. So we see that the liver pyruvate kinase is the L isozyme in contrast to the M isozyme that we find in muscle cells. So the L isozyme predominates in liver cells. The L pyruvate kinase responds to the same allosteric effector. So as we discussed a moment ago, ATP, alanine, and fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. But in L isozymes, they also respond to covalent modification via the process of phosphorylation. So when the blood glucose levels are low, the phosphorylation process of this L-isozyme basically makes that molecule much less active. And this means more important tissue cells, so brain cells and muscle cells, can actually obtain that glucose before the liver, the liver cells actually do. And once again, to go back to our example of where we're essentially starving, we haven't eaten for weeks, we can get that sandwich because of this, because our body is able, is able to actually regulate which cells of the body get that glucose first so that the skeleton muscle cells, our cardiac muscle cells, and the brain cells can allow us to actually get that food product. We can ingest that food product and then that glucose can be distributed to the liver cells of our body.